Now that Animal Crossing New Horizons is out there and we're all hopelessly obsessed, people can start looking forward to other Switch games like Bayonetta 3, Metroid Prime 4, Breath of the Wild 2. But let's be honest, Nintendo is nowhere near ready to talk about these titles and we're gonna have to wait till at least the summertime most likely to find out. So the calendar looks sparse, but thankfully each week we do get new Switch game announcements and I'm bringing you seven of them today and we're gonna take a look at the trailers together and decide if they're crap or if they're worth getting hyped for. Let me know in the comments down below if any of these games excite you and if none do, that's okay. We'll figure it out together. Last week we did this and it was pretty darn fun, so hit that like button if you enjoy. On to the first game. We actually start off with a banger. Disco Elysium was a hit on PC and it's coming to Switch. This was confirmed from the art director of the game, Alexander Rostov, during an interview with the BBC. No date, no price, but it's coming to Switch. If you don't know, Disco Elysium is a super dope game that I've been meaning to play, but now I'm gonna hold off. You guys ever feel that way where you hear about a game, you're like, oh, I wanna play that on PlayStation or PC. And then you hear it's coming to Switch, and you're like, well, I'll just hold my horses. This is a big adventure game where you make all the choices, and everything you do impacts the story, impacts your character, and it's very unique. It's very hardcore in the sense that you've got to measure and maintain all of your different stat elements, and they're not your traditional stats. They're, they're very unique. You can develop all sorts of different skills. It looks like a blast. It looks like it's going to be a very gamery game. And a lot of times, that's what we ask for on Switch. So I'm glad this one is coming. No date, but I'm hoping it hits in 2020. We'll have to wait and see. It's only on Steam, so I'm guessing that they do want to get it uh, to other platforms at some point this year. It released last October. That one is a good one. Next up is Microman. This game was just announced, and it's actually coming to next-gen consoles and Switcheroo. It's due in 2021. The second half, actually. And it's a game where you play a shrunken... Man, this honestly looks a lot like the new game from Obsidian that they're doing for Xbox. I like shrunken storylines. Honey, we shrunk ourselves. Honey, we shrunk the kids. Honey, I blew up the baby. Those are great movies. Rick Moranis actually reprising his role for a Disney Plus sequel. Become the smallest man on Earth. Okay. Follow the story. It's a single player game. You're going to be duking it out with bosses like ants. Riding skateboards and butterflies and trying to get back to normal size. Which looks like a pretty fun concept, although I will say this gameplay looks very basic and not all that exciting. It's very simplistic. Um, this comes from Glob Game Studio. I don't know anything about them. It's interesting that they're gonna try to make the game for, uh, you know, PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. I like the concept. They claim that the gameplay is gonna be very diverse and include surprising elements. Face off with ants, frogs, hedgehogs. You saw the butterfly on the skateboard. They say it's going to be very humorous and uh, have a completely new perspective on the urban jungle. We'll see. I I'm kind of obviously looking more forward to Obsidian's title. What is that one called? Obsidian's game. Obsidian's got a new Xbox game and it looks a lot like this, except it's more of a shooter grounded. You're like fighting amongst uh, the, the small, small world. That one, I don't think you're trying to get big again. This one, the whole goal is to get big again. Um, I don't know that this game gets very big, but it could be interesting. It's coming to all the consoles, and I'm glad that Switch is in that conversation. That's a good thing as we move into the next generation. Commander 85 looks pretty hot. This is a Kickstarter right now, but it's a, it's like a sci-fi thriller set in the 80s. An adventure game, but 3D and in first person? You're a kid who gets a freaking Commander 85... And, uh, it's a computer. Maverick, Mike, Harry Poppins, or whatever you want me to call him. And, and it has an AI. Student. They say you haven't been to class for a few days. Usually. Huh. With a friend, out of this world, myself, I am the Commander 85 computer, equipped with the most advanced artificial intelligence. Like, all this or stuff looks pretty cool. Kind of reminds me, like, Gone Home, like a walking simulator. me to say... But they do say it's a thriller. They say it's going to be uh, a lot of random events, three different endings, additional games and programs. You're going to be hacking, playing games, drawing, playing with a dog, watching videos. Holy cow! Okay, detonate nuclear device. You know, this game's going to boil down to is the story engaging. Games like Gone Home, the ones that are successful, right? What Remains of Edith Finch, like games like that. 
are successful because they hook you. Okay. Hooks, right? <laughs> right on cue, Commander. The government guys are looking for you. Oh, God. They say you're trying to start World War Three. What is this crazy talk? What is this crazy computer doing? How did he get access to this? It seems to be serious. Like, really, really serious. You have to do something about it, but I'll help you. Gosh, all of a sudden it's like Stranger I Things gone wrong. Luke were planning to disconnect me, and I'm afraid that's something I cannot allow to happen. But instead of the Upside Down taking over the world, it's just like giant bombs taking over the world. Look, if they can hit the story in the tone, that could be cool. Uh, the Kickstarter is running right now, so I don't expect this game for a while. Oh no, it says this fall. This is reality. Wow. It says this fall. With just one click. That's you interesting. Three of them. Okay, so this game could be kind of neat. Um, Co-funded by the Ministry of Culture in Poland. Interesting. All right, well, I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic about this one. It's a Kickstarter that is coming this fall. If you guys want to check it out... Um, it's running right now, but I'm probably just gonna wait till the game comes out and see if it's if it's any good. This one is beautiful, Dordogne or Dordogne, Dordogne. It's a French game from a Cannes Film Festival award-winning animator, and they're making a game where you play as this girl in the present as an adult, and in the past as a child to solve puzzles with insane art. Oh, that gives me chills. Stuff like this is just so beautiful. You know, we see so many pixel art games, right? And then cell shaded games. But, like, you're going to play this? Yeah, you're going to play it. You're controlling the character. This looks super freaking right up my personality. I love, like, sentimental, cool stories like this. Sadly, it's not due till next year, 2021. But, oh, I've got my eyeballs glued to this. I think it's, it's like this amazing watercolor painted world i'm not sure what's happening here that's a little what's happening why are we moving the world like that it's like a photograph that they're moving with the mouse taking a photo of the map i guess i don't know it kind of gives me like life is strange vibes i know it's not going to be like that um entirely but just from the standpoint of like oh you're this girl there's the past there's a future Maybe nothing like Life is Strange. Maybe I just missed Life is Strange. Season 2 did nothing for me. That's a game that... It's not on Switch. Why is that not on Switch? Huh. Anyhow. I'm I'm going to be keeping my eyes closed on Dordogne. It looks pretty freaking good. And it's just beautiful. The gameplay is a little... It's like puzzle solve adventure-y. Right? Um, it says, Through the quest of young Mimi, discover the beautiful environments of Dordogne. Faithfully adapted into watercolor, they'll immerse you in this charming French region so dear to Mimi. Forest walks, climbing, kayaking, cave explorations. Discover those typical activities of the region. Puzzles and mysteries to progress in this story. Play as Mimi in the present as an adult and in the past as a child. Be resourceful and patient to solve puzzles and mysteries left by her grandmother. Yeah, it's a lot more esoteric than something like Life is Strange, but it's just it's got such a nice vibe. And I love that, like, there's this interesting UI. It's very physical, like, you're opening books and cameras. Stuff like this is so neat to me. Is it going to be a banger? Probably not. But, uh, I'm super looking forward to this. It says you get to create your own journal unique to each playthrough. Uh, a truly symbolic object of a high sentimental value. It reflects Mimi's adventures and memories of Dordogne and the connection she shares with her grandmother. This is an artsy game if there ever was one. But I've been talking recently about how I miss UBR's titles. And, like, you know, Ubisoft has that French connection. So if any game is going to carry on the UBR's torch, it could be this. I'm excited. Next up, we got Elysium Star Driver, which is... No, Star Diver. We're diving into the stars. In the distant rings of the planet Alpheos, rookie mechanic Samantha Crane takes her first careful steps in the field as an official member of a crew of misfit space salvagers. It's a Metroid-style game. And it looks like you're piloting a mech more often than a person. It's hard to tell with these games. They could either feel really good and have interesting weaponry and bosses and be fun, or they could be super basic and boring and not even worth a couple bucks. So TBD on Lysium Star Driver, Elysium Star Driver. It's Mawilo Studios in partnership with FDG Entertainment. And uh, it's supposed to be releasing on Switch and other platforms sometime. They don't even give a specific date, not even a year. I like the little mech, but like I said, these games are such a dime a dozen. It takes a lot for one to stand out. So 
we'll see. Danger Scavenger, a new roguelike game, because we need more of those. Sometimes they're awesome. I still love it. It's one of my favorite genres to play on Switch. It's just hard for one to come in and top the greats, the Enter the Gungeons, the, uh, you know, Binding of Isaacs, the Dead Cells, for me, the Flint Hooks. I can't wait till Scourgebringer is on Switch. This one, uh, there are four different scavengers you can choose from. You can play in co-op, up to four players. It's obviously coming to Steam. It's supposed to hit Steam in Q2 and Switch in Q4. It's a pretty short trailer, so let's run it back. Um, it says over 30 weapons, 50 items and upgrades. Uh, you can buy or loot these weapons. It says something about, like, you can take the easy way and return with nothing or continue to become the hero you always wanted to be. I don't know if that's referencing the meta, like, you can get out early and, and save some money. Or you can push your luck and try to defeat the whole run. Um, it says 30 different types of enemies, bosses, five greedy corporations, unexpected item combinations that you'll discover during your adventures. Just like no two snowflakes are the same, you can never get the same build twice. Design your perfect strategy by repeated trial and error, followed by many deaths, of course. I like the soundtrack. I think that's pretty cool. And the fact that it's a co-op roguelike, that's kind of neat. Four-player co-op roguelike. Interesting. I mean, the, the art is pretty cool. It reminds me of Rad, the game that came out earlier. Well, it was last year now. Um, I did not like that game. But, look, like, the UI in the corner is pretty cool. How you're gathering, like, all these items and creating this unique build. I think that concept is kind of cool. Instead of, like, oh, special items, like, you get a bunch of items to make a very unique character. We'll keep an eye on it. It looks pretty cool. Last and potentially least, if I'm honest, is Theme Park Simulator. Now, when this first got announced, they said it's coming out next week, April 17th. I was like, dude, that could be cool. Build a theme park. No, you don't build a theme park. This is actually an iOS game that's moving to Switch where you ride theme park rides. I didn't even know this was a thing. You ride the rides. There are 11 rides that you can ride in third or first person. You can manage their capacity, their speed, their direction, their movement patterns, their smoke and light effects. So you're literally just riding theme park rides. It is a mobile game that's free on iOS. I looked. This is a thing. This seems like a thing you put a quarter in it like a Chuck E. Cheese. Like, ride the roller coaster. Except you're not even, like, sitting in it. You're just watching it. Do you, do people like this? I will not be getting Theme Park Simulator on April 17th, but it was announced this week, and I wanted to bring your attention to it. So there's your seven games for the week. Not all of them are hits. There's definitely some misses, but I think we got some gold in that pile of rocks. Disco Elysium is a great game, and it's going to be so neat to have on Switch, so I'm looking forward to that. And then I liked a few of these. Dordon, the hand-painted game, looks beautiful. I'm willing to give Dangerous Scavenger a roll to see what that is like. It could be neat. And then Microman... It looks basic, but who knows? Maybe after I have played Obsidian's Grounded, maybe I'll just be really into small people games. Like I said, I do really like Honey, We Shrunk the Kids. So let me know which ones you're excited by in the comments down below. Hit that like button if you enjoyed and are ready to see what's coming next week. We do this show every freaking weekend because there's always new stuff on Switch. And now we get to watch it and check it out and decide if it's exciting or not together. So let me know in the comments down below. Oh, Commander 85. If that story's good, that's like Stranger Things meets Gone Home, and I kind of dig it. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. Have a fantastic day, everybody. Make sure you're staying safe and staying healthy and staying home out there. Until next time, thanks again for watching. Love you. Appreciate your support. Switch Force, out.